from Cremo Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The National Department of Transport in July launched the Valles Donke War Room, which will monitor and manage all puzzle repairs in the country at San Ral Central Operations Center in Centurion. Cameron Mackay has the story. The new facility, situated at the San Ral Central Operations Center, will have a dedicated team from various clusters to coordinate government's ongoing efforts in repairing potholes and to monitor service delivery. Transport Minister Sindesiwe Chukunga was shown around the facility and spoke to various operators working at the war room, who explained some of the capabilities and operations of the facility. The Transport Department launched the national campaign to fix potholes on August 8 last year, with a call for joint efforts by the nine provinces and all 278 municipalities, which comprises eight metropolitan, 44 district and 226 local municipalities. There have since been several activities across provinces to implement the project. At the event, Chakunga stressed that the success of the war room will depend on strong government relations and communication, as they impact roads infrastructure, provision and maintenance. Our collaboration across spheres of government towards fixing transport generally will always have to be fed organically by programs and projects on the ground while strengthening joint planning and budgeting efforts. The establishment of this war room is both a bold and honest attempt we are making to fix road transport challenges presented by the potholes that we see almost every day. It is a bold step on our part because of the enormity of the challenge and thus the vast coverage required to effectively deploy I and mean, effective, effective deployment of this resource. It is also a very honest acknowledgement of the fact that we can never truly attack this challenge without adequate and sufficient sight of the entire road network, including acting on reported challenges. In addition, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, this war room is also being established due to a serious recognition on our part of a disturbing inability to process the road data received due to some of the following reasons. For instance, missing information, wrong data received, or data received is sent in an unwakeable format and at times no data is supplied. Chukunga stressed that despite scheduled five constitutional provisions for the separation of roles, the national sphere of government has a responsibility to ensure that roads are managed within a framework of national norms and standards. This is intended to maximize the role of roads in enabling economic activity and access to social amenities. Stressing the severity of the challenges involved with the local road network, as a high amount of deaths and damage to vehicles has been attributed to increased road accidents. Chukunga stated that the Transport Department has recently visited and inspected a number of national roads. This was done in Mpumalanga and the Northwest Province. The Department will continue to visit other provinces, such as the Eastern Cape and KwaZulu-Natal, in the foreseeable future. This has now included concerted consultation meetings that we have already had with particular provinces in our national drive across all nine provinces to sit with premiers and provincial executives, as well as with members of SALGA, to formalize steps to be taken collectively across spheres of government. We do this in the understanding that, as we've indicated, road authorities have special and exclusive responsibility towards the roads that belong to them. However, we still believe that we can work together, hence the visits to provinces. This is, of course, notwithstanding our understanding, of course, of the differences in dynamics across provinces. Our mission as a department is to lead the development of efficient integrated transport system by creating a framework of sustainable policies and regulations and apply implementable models to support broader government strategy, strategies for social economic development. During a question and answer session, Chukunga stated that the country's road networks are owned by different road authorities across various spheres of government, such as national, provincial, metros, districts and municipalities. 
the Transport Department wants South African roads to be trafficable as well as user-friendly. For once we're going to have information that is collected into one area from the whole of South Africa. And we have decided and we will continue to say that in order for us to transfer even the grant to provinces, one of the conditions will be for them to register on this APP so that they then become part of the APP and they own it. And therefore we can get information, we can locate a pothole, we can send information to the rightful road authority. So it definitely will be a condition. If the province has not registered, then of course we will not be able to transfer that uh, uh, grant. If they continue not to do that, and, and we think that we might end up underspending, then we'll transfer the money to another province that will be ready to spend that money so that we do not underspend. So definitely that will call for us to monitor this and ensure that things happen well on time. Chukunga emphasized the significance of South Africa's 750,000 kilometer road network, which also places South Africa at number 11 in the world in terms of total road length. Above number one, it will be your US 6.8 million, million kilometers, your China at 6.15, your India at 5 whatever, your Brazil's of this world, your Australia's of this world. We compare not very well with some of the countries that are in that category. We are one developing country at number 11. In Africa, the next country that follows South Africa will be Nigeria, 895,000 kilometer road network, that is their total network. For us, 159,000 kilometer is only the paved roads. And the paved road of South Africa put us at number 18, their length put us at number 18 in the world. We're not doing good, but comparatively speaking, we're not doing bad. The minister pointed out that given South Africa's extensive road network, the quality of roads ranges significantly across the country. While South Africa also has a significant amount of gravel roads, she argued that these roads are also used in more developed countries that rank above South Africa in terms of road network quality. If it was according to us, if South Africa was just to say we're going to only focus on road network this year, so we're going to close down hospitals, schools and everything and focus on road network, we'll take the whole budget of South Africa and then of course pave all our roads, but we'll still need money for, 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 for managing and for maintaining those roads. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen like that. He, she, the the DTG has said that it's 13 billion rand for this financial year, but that 13 billion rand is shared amongst the nine provinces. And that is why our wish and our request from provinces is that they match whatever that we send to them. Round for round, I mean round for round, pound for pound. So that if we say 1.4 billion rand, the Northwest province says we also are matching you with 1.4 billion rand and therefore they can have 2.8 billion rand for that financial year. But sometimes it doesn't happen like that because of the resources that are not equal that provinces will have. But we're moving towards doing something. The minister also stated that Sanral's Central Operations Centre already has the existing infrastructure, technology and personnel to ensure effective monitoring and coordination of intervention programs for all operations, maintenance and other road-related activities. Through this war room, information can be managed easily through visualization of relevant data that will be conveyed more effectively. A specialist at the war room will also be able to analyze the data and respond appropriately, she added. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.